Ugly Brunette by Horse Jumper of Love. We're not having any fun today. We're just learning the song and that's it. This is a serious song for serious people, not in the mood for any fun. Guys, it's an open D tuning, otherwise known as dad fad. That means the top string is tuned down a whole step to D. Next string is regular A. The next one is regular D. The next one is tuned down a half step to F sharp. Then the second to the bottom is tuned down a whole step to A. And then the bottom string is tuned down a whole step to D. It is called open D tuning because if you play the open strings, it just makes a D chord, and they call it dad fad because it's just an acronym to remember D A D F sharp. The sharp is a little, you call it dad f sharp ad. Good one. Anyway, I made a video, I'll leave the thing for switching to alternate tunings with minimal frustration and pain and misery and suffering. So you can check that out. Let's just learn the song now. We mostly just have this main riff we have to learn. Then we have a chorus section and then we have a couple variations and that's all there is to it. So let's learn the main riff. You're all tuned up into dad fad. Put your middle finger on the fifth fret of the top string. Put your ring finger on the fifth fret of the second string from the top, the rest of the strings are all open. I do believe for much of this song, the palm of his hand right here, the upper palm, the fing this this part, I think he's touching the bottom string to mute it. Here's the here's the main riff. You guys ready? You've got your chord all locked and loaded, ready to go. You're gonna just do a nice big old strum down. So nice and so fine. Then you're gonna do a tiny little baby little strum where we just want to hit the top two or three strings. What I would do is just aim for the top string, and then when you inevitably hit extra strings, it'll be fine. After that, we're gonna strum up on all the strings. So we've got down, uh, uh. See that? So it's big strum down, little strum down, big strum up. Let's do it together so you can get the rhythm. One, two, here we go, and strum. Let's do it again. Here we go. Down, down, up. Great. Then, there's a little pause, and then you're just gonna do your baby little strum down again, and then your big strum up again. When you put it all together, it sounds like this. Three, four. Now we're at the part of the song you're gonna hate because there's a little bar chord, but as far as bar chords go, it's not that bad. We still have this chord ready to go. You're gonna strum your baby little strum down on this chord. Then you're just gonna lift up both of those fingers, do another baby little strum down. And then we have to go to this chord right here. So here's what's happening. My pointer finger is indeed smashing down on the second fret of every single string. The good news is you get to use your middle finger to help it smash down. If you don't, if you don't do this trick where you take your middle finger and push on top of your pointer finger, so you have the power of two fingers pushing down, guys, you're missing out. There's so much power. It's it's unfathomable the power of two fingers. And then your pinky is gonna push on the second fourth fret of the third string from the top. So we've got these here and then that there. You can see it. Your ring finger's not doing anything. It's just hanging out. It looks like it's doing something because it doesn't have anything better to do. You're gonna strum down, down on this chord. It's a beautiful chord. Here's what we just did. We went, uh, that was it. We went bing, bong, pow. Let's put everything together that we've done thus far. One, two, nice and slow, and. about it. You feel good about it? Do you feel great about this? We're almost done with the riff. We go down, down, then you lift up these fingers and strum up. And then you start over with this chord. So here's what that sounds like. We've got... That was very sloppy. Let's try it one more time. Right back to that one. It's great. So much fun. So I guess we should just play this whole thing, right? Oh, we don't need to review it. You can go back and rewind and watch it again if you want review. That's the magic of video and YouTube. One, two, here we go. And I, 
I didn't go back to that. I should have. I messed it up. Guys, I'm sorry. I messed everything up. In the song, they do that three times in a row. Therefore, we're going to practice it three times in a row. Guys, we're having a little rehearsal here, practicing that whole thing three times in a row. And then I have something very fun and very exciting I'm going to show you afterwards. So stay tuned. One, two, three, four. Up, down, up, down, down. Hey, you. There's one. Did it twice, only one more to go. We did it three times, that's all it takes. Here's the fun thing, you ready? So, the guy, Mr. Horse Jumper himself, he's got a whammy bar on his guitar. I'm playing on acoustic, because I like playing it on acoustic. It sounds good. I've heard him playing it on acoustic guitars. It sounds good when he does it too. He's got his whammy bar, and what he does is every time, after that big strum up, he grabs his whammy bar and he just goes He just gives it the tiniest, he doesn't go He just like grabs it and just like puts a little bit of pressure on it. It just makes the guitar go Very, it gives it a nice organic fun sound. So if you're playing on electric, you can just go And just grab your whammy bar, give it a little, a little something. If you're playing on acoustic like I am, watch this. Watch, watch. It's very subtle. It's a subtle little thing. It's also dangerous. You could break your guitar in half, but prob probably not. You're most likely not going to break your guitar in half. If you put pressure right here on the shoulder of the guitar, and then you just push on the neck lightly. Guys, we're not trying to break guitars in half. We're just doing the tiniest little pressure. And you get that little tremolo effect. It's very fun. I forgot to do it. I forgot to do it again. I don't know how to play guitar. So anyway, that's my little thing. You can leave now. My name's Stuart, by the way. Uh, if you like this content, you can like this video. You can subscribe. You can leave comments. I like, I'm gonna, uh, how about for the comments today? Would you comment on what your favorite brand of binder paper is? I don't, I can't name any brands of binder paper, so I don't have a favorite, but I'd love to hear yours. After we play that three times, just a tiny little, tiny little thing he does. He's got his first main chord all ready to go. He goes like this, he goes down, down, and then he strums up, but when he comes up, he tries to just hit the third string from the bottom. He's still plucking up on that, it's like down, down, up. It's gonna take a little bit of practice to get that aim. Here's the good news, if you miss that string and hit a different string, oh, I messed, oh well, I tried to miss and I hit it. I'm just that good, I mean, I don't know what to say. If you mess up and hit a different string, it's still gonna sound fine because all the strings sound good. So we go down, down, uh. Then we just go down, up on that same string again. Then we go down and up on that same string again. But then the fourth time, he goes down and then up on the second string from the bottom. So it sounds a little something like this. It's That last time, the rhythm also changes. He's a little bit earlier. Try just this part with me. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up. I'm... One, two, three, four. Then the singing starts. This is when the singing begins, and he keeps doing his same riff. He just does the... doing that you guys at this point in time we're gonna learn one little variation we're gonna talk about what happens as they start getting ready to go into the chorus what they do is they play the same chords but they just get a little bit more strummy they're going instead of going it's going like this So I'm, I'm not gonna like micromanage this too much. We've got our first chord ready. We're just gonna go down, 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 open, uh, uh, down, 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 down. So you see what I did? It was down like how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like eleven times, 
Then you play that open strum as you're getting ready for our little bar chord. You're gonna strum down, 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 and then open, and you start over. So it, so if you, so here, let's just micromanage it. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and uh, 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 I, ooh, I, makes sense, right? We're good. I'm good at explaining things. Let's learn the chorus to the song. Chorus to the song goes like this. It goes... We've got middle finger ninth fret on the top string, ring finger ninth fret on the second string from the top. I'm gonna strum down twice. I'm aiming for like four strings. I'm just, I'm not really worried about how many strings I'm hitting. I'm going... And it's just two nice slow strums down. One, two. Then you move these two fingers back to the seventh fret. Play this once. Then right back to the ninth fret. Now at this point, I'm gonna show you two ways you can do this. The way I like to do it is like this. That is how I've seen Mr. Horse Jumper play it when it's just him and an acoustic guitar and it's pretty great. You have the same bar chord we were doing before. So it's pointer finger barring on the second fret, pinky on the fourth fret of the third string from the top. Then get your ring finger right behind your pinky. So it's pushing on the same string just to give it a little more control. You're gonna strum this chord and then you're gonna bend this note down, bring it back and then bend it again. So it's, this is kind of, this is kind of hard, but I think it sounds pretty great. It's just two bends. Bending down, going back, bending down, going back. I don't know why I explained that so many times. Then you get rid of these two fingers, strum just the pointer finger barring on the second fret, and then you go back to our regular 5-5 five, five chord. Remember that guy? So let me just play that for you again. It goes... Now the other option, which is what I think he does when it's with the full band and there's the bass and the drums and the distortion and everything, is don't worry about barring that second fret. Just play the fourth fret on the third string from the uh, from third string from the top. I still recommend using two fingers at least. You're just gonna play just that one string, give it the two bends, then play second fret on the third string from the top, and then go back to our chord. So it's just. This way it's a little more defined, it's a little more focused, you don't have to bar anything. Here's my recommendation. If you're playing it all by yourself, do this way. With a little chord built in. If you're playing this with your band at the talent show, then just do that and the bass player can play the other stuff. Maybe you even have a second guitar player. I don't know, I'm not in your band. Can I join your band? Now all you have to do is play that fifth fret chord for eight beats, which is like uh, eight times two strums, 16 strums, we're just gonna go one and two and three and four and five, six and seven and eight, then start the chorus over. Well, let's, let's play the whole chorus all the way through once, and I think we're done, guys. One, two, one, two, here we go! You made my guitar go out of tune. One more time! Nine, nine, seven, nine, walkie, walkie, two, bang, oh. It's been real, guys. It's been real, like a horse jumping, love, ugly person. Brunette, brown hair. Bye.